Reverend Dr. York, where can we find the devil? By where can we find the devil? Do you mean where, like where does he live? Where does he reside? In which people can he be found? In which places can he be found? Can anybody clear up maybe what does she mean by where can we find the devil? Uh, most people are running from the devil, so where can we find the devil? What exactly do you mean? Is the devil physical? I feel like the devil is chasing me, and I mm -hmm. need to know how can I get him off my back. All right, let's start with the where then. Now, what happens is, first, the biggest mistake made, especially in the English-speaking world, is when they go to the Bible in Genesis chapter 3, and they get that first sentence that reads, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God, or Yahweh Elohim, right, had made. And they immediately call this serpent or as the, as the Hebrew has it, Nachash, they immediately call him the devil. We all do it slipping because it's been taught to us all our lives. We make that mistake. When nowhere in there does it call him the devil. It calls him a subtle or sneaky beast of the field, which later on in the same chapter transforms into a reptilian type of creature because they give him like a snake and they say on his belly shall he crawl and you know lose his legs and such but right. nowhere does it imply in that chapter Genesis chapter 3 that he is the devil right, right? in fact what you say the word devil doesn't come up until for the first time until Leviticus uh, chapter 17 verse 7 that's the first time you see it and it reads and they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils. And you look up the word devil and you see the word sa'ir. Mm -hmm. Sa'ir. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the word Satan, mm -hmm. which we'll look up next. It has the word sa'ir and a little research into the Hebrew language reveals that that means a hairy creature. Mm -hmm. Somebody hairy. Now where a problem comes in is in Genesis chapter Three, the implication here is that we're dealing with a snake, right. a serpent called Nakash. Right. But there's no snakes with hair. Right. Right. Snakes don't have hair right. or hairy snakes. So now we have a problem already with whoever is writing the Bible they are getting two characters mixed up. The right. devil, who is Sa'ir in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 7, who is hairy, versus Nahash, who is a whisperer, for what that word means, or incantator. All right, so what happens is we got a problem here, because we have two different forms of devils in the Bible. Again, see these things with this language is a major problem. And anytime a preacher or reverend or pastor stand up there and he doesn't have an eye into the original language and he's not getting to the original word. Right. So he's not really telling you what the Bible is saying as a scripture from God, but he's telling you what interpreters and translators want you to know. And right. sometimes it gets too deep for them and they just go by King James and leave your soul out there. Right. Right. Because right. as you read reading, we'll find out that Genesis chapter 3 refers to something as a serpent and then the first time devil pops up we find that in Leviticus and it pops up as a hairy creature. Now the word Satan doesn't pop up for the first time in 1st Chronicles 21 1 and it reads Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And when you look up the word there in Hebrew you get the word Sotan and it means adversary mm -hmm. now but to be adverse to you I must be on your equal level right, 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 right. you follow I must be walking on the ground against you I am not only an adversary of yours but I am somebody who tries to withstand you from going forward right, right. prevent you from moving mm -hmm. because in this quote it says and the adversary which they could have put in the translation mm -hmm. to make it simpler stood up against Israel and provoke David what? To number Israel. See this? Made him get up and count the Israelites. Mm. 
Right. Say, this is Satan. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you start probing one step deeper, you go into, let's say, in the Islamic religion, mm -hmm. and in the Quran, if you went to the second chapter of the Quran, they start to tell you something about how the devil works also in the Muslim world. They read, it says, and it's translating, and of the human beings, there are some who will say, we believe in God, and in the last day or the day of judgment, while they are not believers. Anybody who is saying they believe in God, and is not a believer, is one of Satan's children. Whether they be Christian, Muslim, Jew, whatever. If they say they do, when they really don't, then what is that? That's the works of the devil. Right. It goes on to say, يُخَادِيُونَ اللَّهُ وَالَّذِينَ عَمَنُوا وَمَا يَحْتُونَ إِلَىٰ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْرُونَ They intend to deceive God and those who believe while they deceive not but themselves. But they perceive it not. You follow that? There's people out here who are pretending, as we read in Matthew 24 in another class. People who come out saying, I am Christ, and are going to deceive people. They are preachers walking around with the doctrine of Lucifer and acting like they're Christian ministers. With ulterior motives like the wealth in your grandmother's pocketbook. That's right. That's right. The power. The money. And they're not really concerned with the word. If they were, they would have took the time to learn the language of the scripture. So they would be speaking in the language that Yeshua HaMashiach spoke. Right, right. Which you call, translated, Jesus the Messiah. They would take that seriously. Or they would jump to St. John chapter 1. Verse 41, when they get there and they see that someone, it says, mm -hmm. right. took the name Mashiach out and added in the name Christos. Huh. Took out the Hebrew and interpreted it as something other. Right then they would have said, wait a minute. Read that part. St. John chapter 1 verse 41. He first found his own brother Simon. Go ahead. And said unto him, We have, we have found the Messiah, which is, which is being interpreted the Christ. You see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right there they would say, wait a minute. We're not supposed to change anything. That's right. Not one jot, one more tittle. Right. That's right. Until all is complete. Then we can change it. When it's every revelation, every prophecy, and every event is complete, then we can start to bring it to other languages. And they knew that because God, according to them, in the day of Pentecost, according to them, in Acts 3, mm -hmm. introduced to all those Galeans, and Galeans is a form of Arabic, the language you heard me reading a little earlier, the language of Jesus. Yes. You follow? Mm -hmm. A root from the Ashuric language, or Ashur of Genesis 10. Then he made those Galileans who spoke Arabic able to speak in everybody else's language. Right, right, right. And it's not shama lama lama ding dong like I said before. Right. There's not no rhetoric or no gibber or gibberish that is being pretended by children of Satan who are posing as believers in God. Right. Yes. When they're with you, they say they believe. When they get back to their devil friends, they say, I'm only mocking God. That's, right. That's, right. That's what they do. Yeah. They come out and spy on you. They think they're doing the right thing in the service of Satan. Okay? I'm saying in the service of Satan because when you get to Job, hmm. Satan becomes a man again. That's right. You know what I'm saying? He becomes somebody who's talking <laughs> and walking. And it's very interesting if you understand the language of the scripture to make a distinction between Lord and God, which most preachers can't do. Yes. They don't know that when they use Lord in the New Testament, you get the word hurios. And when they use the word God in the New Testament, they get the word theos in Greek. And hurios would be equivalent to Yahweh or Jehovah. And theos would be equivalent to Elohim. You follow that? But Jesus was worshiping another God. Because Jesus fell on his face and prayed. The same way Abraham was made 
in Genesis chapter 14 to fall on his face and pray. Right, right. And in that prayer, both Abraham and Jesus was asked to pray to the same deity. Ready? Go to Genesis chapter 14. And we're going to find out just who we pray to. In verse 17, it says, And the king of Solomon went out to meet him, go ahead, after his return from the slaughter. Go ahead. And of the kings that were with him, and at the valley of Shava, which is the kings of Dao. Verse 18. And Melchizedek king of Sedeq. Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, Melchizedek, means angel of righteousness. Like in Malachi chapter 4. The same name, the son of righteousness. The same one that Jesus was educated by when it says in Hebrews 7 that Jesus was after the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Well, Abraham was also after the order of this angel that being. Mm -hmm. Melchizedek. Muslims call him Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. or Elkidev. Go ahead, what does it say? Uh, verse 18. Okay. And Melchizedek, king of Salem. That's right. Brought forth bread and wine. And he, and he was, was the priest, priest of the, of the Most High, High God. He was the Kohen or priest of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now he's talking to Abraham. Abraham was being introduced by a strange man, a strange character in the Bible who jumps through the whole Bible. And he introduces him to the Most High God. Watch verse 22. And, and Abraham, Abraham said, said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto, unto the, Lord, Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Most High God. You see, possessor of the heaven and earth. earth. See, he called him a Lord, a Yahweh, right? Right. But he said, this Yahweh is the Highest of all the Yahweh's. Because he is the Iliun, Iliun El. The Most High. Now in your translation, they only got Most High God once. You look in Hebrew, you say Iliun, Iliun El. That's not the Allah of the Quran, you know. The Allah of the Quran is equivalent to the Elohim, which is began by the Alif letter. When the uh, a name Iliun began by the iron letter. A letter said in the back of the throat. Two different letters that sound similar. If you don't know the language, you won't know it. It's like saying Ali. Ali is the most high. And one of the names of a Muslim God of Allah is called El Aliu, the highest. So Jesus, when he was on the cross, according to them, and also David in Psalms 22, when he was on the cross, according to them, said Eli or Eli, he was using the I, the I, the most high God. So many people have asked me on several occasions, if Jesus was God, then who was Jesus praying to? And the answer is quite simple. Like it says in Psalms 82, 6. Is it not written in your law, I said to you, God? But all of you are the children of, if you look at the evil, you're going to see Eliun. So Jesus was praying to the heavenly father who's the most high God, Iliun. The devil's not at war with Iliun. Who's he at war with? He's at war with the Jehovah's, the Yahweh's. And just like there's more than one Jehovah in the Bible, there's more than one Satan in the Bible. There's more than one devil and more than one kind of devil. You're getting devil and devilishment and evil confused. Yes. If all of anybody can commit an act of devilishment, mm -hmm. and while doing that, they are acting on the part of the devil. That's right. That's right. Anybody can do an act of evil. You know the funniest thing about the Bible is? What? Evil is introduced to you in Genesis chapter 3. The first place you see evil is in Genesis chapter 3. You know what it comes out to be? A tree. A tree, not a person. No, right. The first evil thing to be man to be confronted with was a tree. So how did evil become a person? Because they called it a tree of knowledge of good and evil. With too much knowledge, you can become evil. 
Right. With too little bit of knowledge, you can become evil. Right. And you'll start acting mm -hmm. like the devil. Right. Right. Ignorance can do that. A lot of preachers are so busy trying to get your grandmother's money until they don't know their scripture. Right. And they start becoming evil. Right. And they start rhetoric and knowledge that they don't have. You can see that? Check it. The first place in the Bible. Now we got a quote to look at for something else. Satan was talking about. Right, right, right. We can find two Satans if we look at Mark 3.23 3. and Matthew 12.26. You'll find two Satans there. Mm -hmm. Matthew 12.26. Let's do Mark 3.23. And he called them unto him and said unto them, in parables, mm -hmm. how can Satan, Satan cast out Satan? Satan? Right. See that? Yes. Right. They made two Satans there. Right. How can Satan himself cast out his own? Go to the other one. Matthew. Uh huh. Twelve twenty-six. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? You know how? Because Psalms 106.37 tells you. This is the answer to your question. The Genesee Acts. Where is the devil? Mm -hmm. Psalms 106 verse 37. Read. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto the devils. Mm -hmm. And they see? <laughs> your children, you offer them to devils. You have identified the devil as a form of information, mm -hmm. or the information age even, a culture, a way of life contrary to the law of God. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't go with the law of God, then it's the law of the devil. If it's not God's kingdom, then it's the devil's kingdom. You people will allow your children to be educated by devils. You will let them pledge allegiance to devilishment. You'll make them study laws in this judicial system that are laws set up by devils that are not found in the word of God. You allow them to listen to music and dress to be seductive. You allow them to become the devil. You are sacrificing your children to the devil when you send your children out there in the world. That's right. You follow what I'm saying? You say, well, I don't understand that, Rev. You will if you go back to Genesis and read the story of Cain when he's being put out of the garden to go into the land of Nod. Right, right. You with me? Yes. Genesis chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 16. Someone read. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod. On the castle of Eden. What you just read was that Cain left the garden. Mm -hmm. He left an enclosed garden, a place set up by God, where God and his angels walked in the cool of the day. That's right. Right? right. Where they performed the surgery of bringing a woman out of the man. Right. Right. This was God's house and God's family. The God we're talking about of this Bible. Mm -hmm. right. You hear me? Right. And this is where Cain was supposed to be born. And this is where Cain was supposed to live. Right. In the garden. In the garden. Right. On, not on the outside. Now another word would be in the New Testament. They start calling God's garden the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Of God. Right. And you can find that in Revelation chapter 11. Right. And it reads. And it was given me a reed. Like unto a rock. And an angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. And the altar. And what? And them that worship therein. Them that worship where? Therein. Therein. See, they were in an enclosed garden. That enclosed garden had a door to it. Well, that door is mentioned also in Genesis when dealing with Cain. Saying that the devil is squatting down, or rabat. Right. Squatting down, waiting for you to go through that door. Right. Right. And that cherubims, 
placed on the doorway. So it was like a house or a compound, as many people call it. A place where people lived on the inside and was gated in. You know why? If it wasn't gated in, there'd be no reason for a door. If there was only two cherubims placed on one end to watch it, then there was no gates, then they could have walked out any other direction. That's right. That was a home. That was the habitat that God created for his creatures. To stay in there and live amongst theirs. Right. And he looked at going outside as something bad. That's right. Right? Now right. we're back to Nod again. It says in 416, go ahead. And the king went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod. Now let's go back and see what Cain says in 15. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain. Whoever kills you, Cain. This is 15. Mm -hmm. This is before he went out of the house. Mm -hmm. You go outside the temple or the tabernacle of God. Death is waiting for you out there. God must know this. Mm -hmm. And who else knew it? Cain knew it. Let's go back to 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond. And in the think about it, if you look up fugitive and vagabond, you're going to find Nod. Right. Right. He's saying it before he got there. So he knew about the city before he got there. But he was only supposed to be educated in the garden. He only had the knowledge that God gave to Adam and Eve and Abel. Only supposed to be three people here on the planet left. Abel's dead, there should only be an Adam, an Eve, and a Cain. Right. But Cain over here is talking about a land, another land where people lived. Right. But he was in an enclosed garden. God had set up a suburban for him. Right. A right. habitat, a house. And stay in with gates. And it had guards on the gate. Mm -hmm. That's not illegal, that's God's law. That's right. To have angels at the gate That's of right, your right. habitat to keep evil from coming in. Right. It ain't to keep good in. Right. <laughs> good can walk through the door. Right. It's to try to keep people who are evil with right. evil intent. Because when they forced down the door, they came into y'all's land and they caused nothing but damagement for three and a half years. That's right. That's right. A That's devil right. did it. Hmm. That's, right. That's what he's telling you. Go ahead, let's see now. He says, a bag of arms. In the, earth. In, the, in, the earth. in the earth. Once he gets out of the garden, he is going to become a Nanite. Mm -hmm. right. Ain't that what it has in Hebrew? Yes. Right. yes. So the word Nud means a vagabond, mm -hmm. a stranger, a drifter. A drifter. We'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Go back to verse 13 and see. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Oh. Now go back to verse 12. <laughs> when thou touchest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee. You ain't going to have no easy life no more, buddy. Now you have to go out there and get a job and work. The church ain't going to take care of you no more. You go out there and have to get a nine to five. Pay your own car notes. Pay your own telephone bills. It's in the Bible. Buy your own food. Ain't no more living under the community and everybody <laughs> taking care of you. But go ahead. What did he say? Read it. And a few fugitives and a vagabond. What's there again? A few fugitives and a vagabond. A Nod. Nod. He knew. God knew about Nod. Cain mm -hmm. knew about Nod. Mm -hmm. Adam knew about the land of Nod. Mm -hmm. Eve knew about the land of Nod. And Cain knew that the people in the, the land of Nod were all drifters. That's right. They were vagabonds. They were wondering. Nobody really lived there. That's right. The land was not named after a person. It was named because wanderers went there. That's right. Let's see. Las Vegas. That's right. That's right. A city. Let's take New York City. Everybody came out, out of places in Georgia. North Carolina, South Carolina, and they move into these cities right. Right. where all strangers are there. That's right. Because nobody can tell them what to do. Nope. They feel free. Hmm. They just want to be liberated. That's they right. go about doing what they want to do. Hmm. Even though God tells 
you like he told Cain, all you got to do is the right thing and everything will be okay. Right. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to stay home no more. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live down south here no more. I want to go up to the big city. I want to go to Las Vegas. I want to go to South Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. I want to go to all the places where strangers gather. That's right. You hear me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about it. Read what happens. What happens? Go ahead. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Don't put me out. Please. Don't send me out there. Yeah. This is too great of a punishment for killing somebody. You killed your own flesh and blood. That's right. You killed your own brother. Mm -hmm. And you think the punishment is too great? You know why? Because as a killer, he understood murder. That's right. Read the Bible and see if he doesn't. Go ahead. Behold, God has driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from thy face shall I be hid. He's going somewhere where God does not show up. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond. Tell him where he's going to go. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that everyone that finds me shall slay me. What is slay me? Kill. Kill. What did he do to his brother? Kill. Kill. He knew where he was going. You see, he knew he was going outside the garden where God's presence was, and outside the garden where God's presence was, he knew he was going to encounter killers. Mm -hmm. You know, so did Cain one number the devil himself. That's right. Because he chose the devil over God. That's right. He chose. He made the decision after God came to him and gave him a chance. That's right. He still made the decision to go into the world That's right. and give himself to devils, right. and give himself, as the Bible says, to Gentiles. So when you start trying to find the devil, mm -hmm. you'll find the devil right inside people's hearts, sitting in with you and talking to you. That's right. You follow, you find parents delivering their kids to devils. Because see, this book makes it impossible for you to chastise your kid, right? Right. Let me say that again. This Bible makes it impossible for you to chastise your kids, right? No. Wrong. But the laws of the devil makes it impossible for you to chastise your kid. And it says if you don't chastise your kid, Spare the rod, you spoil the child. If you don't raise a child right, then they're going to depart from you. Right? right. right? right, right. Don't they? Depart yeah. from you. Say it. Depart, depart from you. you. What did Cain have to do? Depart from you. Had to get out the garden and go to the big city. Yes. Not the wicked city where evil people were. There was polygamy there when he got there. Mm -hmm. So they already had a culture. Mm -hmm. He met a man named Lamech who had wives. Ada. Already there. This city and these people were grown. So Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel couldn't have been the only people on the planet. So let's think. There's another person in the Bible in Genesis chapter 3. He wasn't created in the garden. Yeah. Well. <laughs> now, he was an evil person because he incited Cain to make him kill Abel. Correct? And where did he meet this person? Where did Eve meet this person? Subtle, sneaky. He snuck in the garden. Where is he from? The land of Nod. That's where Nahash. Or the serpent people are from the land of Nod. But they got to come back in here with y'all to pull you out. That's right. Oh. See? That's right. They got to come on the land <laughs> and visit you and pretend that the lights are brighter in Nod. That's right. To make you want to go out there where you are risking your life. That's right. If your son is gone, all you got to do is find out who came back for the sole purpose of getting him. Someone came back and enticed him and took him out with him and he gone. Who got your daughter out there? Some of them are inside with you. That's why they call him Nakash. 
You look up in the house, you get whispers. Whisper. Mm -hmm. They suggest things in the people. Mm -hmm. They cause gossip in the church and separation in the church and slander in the church and unrest in the church. They stir confusion in the garden because, see, he snuck in the garden. And he turned Eve against God in the garden. <laughs> and caused Cain to be cast out of Eve's children. Because Eve's heart was hardened against God. If she disobeyed him. Because what? He offered her things. He dangled things in front of her. Food. <laughs> right? Good for food. Pleasant to the eye, beautiful things, glittery things, and desires, wants to make one wise. I'm going out there. Here's one of the most common statements I've ever heard in any church, congregation, or temple. I'm going out there because I want to further my education so I can come back and help the community. That's all I want to do. That's all. I'm not really leaving, y'all. I'm not really leaving the church. I'm not even leaving Georgia. And going up to New York to Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm not going there. I'm just going to get a better education. I want to go out there and complete my education so I can come back and have something to offer you. I'm just desirous to become wise. That's one of the things the devil offers you. Hey, I was going, all I need to get, get a good education. And what? In education in the law of God or in education in the law of the devil? I just want to become a doctor so I can help people. You don't have to become a doctor to help you. You can become a neurologist and help people. Yeah. And you not do things. But doctors ain't doing nothing giving you poison. Right. You're watching your daddy and your granddaddy die because these doctors don't know what they're doing. They're experimenting. Right. That's why it's called a hospital. Because right. it means be hospitable. Help people. But not, it should be called a curable. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. That's all thought out. Well planned. You want to know where the devil's at? <laughs> the devil's walking among us every day. The devil takes on many different forms. The devil is not white, and he's not black, and he's not Chinese. Though they do say he's a hairy creature. They're talking about one of them, and they're talking about groups of devils. And people offering themselves and sacrificing their children to devils and demons. And Job had to deal with one kind of devil. And Adam and Eve had to deal with another kind of being. And they keep on going around. It's not one kind. That's a setup. That's to make you look for some guy with horns and a pitchfork. So you don't see the people running the things are devils. Because they work their way into key positions. What did the devil say he wanted to do in Isaiah? Huh? He wanted to be raised above the stars of the heavens. He wanted to sit on the throne of God. So now he's a president. Huh? Talk up. He wanted the fame. That's right. He wanted the fame. He wanted the glory. He wanted the power. Now he's a king. Now he's a sultan. Now he's a czar. And he's ruling millions of people's lives and telling men, get weapons and violate God's commandment in Exodus, thou shalt not kill. Go to war and fight under the God of war. One of their old gods that they worshipped. Hear me? What's the purpose? That's it. The purpose is to implant the devil's seed inside you. Mm -hmm. Make you lust after them physically. Mm -hmm. Make you lust after the things they have. Mm -hmm. Make you want to look like them. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus Christ's revelation through John the divine reveals to us in chapter 13. Mm -hmm. That people who are living in the image of the beast. Mm -hmm. Someone tell you to look like an African. I ain't no African. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I ain't no African. Mm -hmm. You only feel pretty when you got hair hanging all over your face. Mm -hmm. Things that are not natural to you. That's right. So in whose image are you living? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your beauty you see as other than your own. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all part of the trick. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you're looking for the devil. Let's find some quotes in the Bible that tells us about them. One quote we're going to look at. Is Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 and I love that <laughs> I use it a lot you know why because it clearly says the devil has children Jesus knew that you know why because Jesus said you are of your father the devil so if you have your father the devil then you're a devil and your father and you must have a mother there must be mother devils <laughs> 
and mothers and fathers giving birth to little baby devils. Right. They're walking around every day in uniforms mm -hmm. and making your life miserable mm -hmm. while they're pretending they have a law. Hmm. You saw that one? Yes. What did you say? And, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. So the devil has children through sexual intercourse. Seed is there, zira. Mm -hmm. You follow? Now look at John 8:44. And here's where Jesus calls them devils. Ye are of your father, the devil. What about them? And the lust of your father, ye will do. There you go. How does he get us? He was a murderer. No. How does he get us first? Lust. The lust. lust. Y'all think by making yourself pretty, you are attracting men. Mm. But you're making yourself pretty by the devil's standards of beauty. And you're pulling the lust out of men. I ain't finished. Don't shut me up. You're pulling the lust out of us. Right. Men. And then, when we don't want to deal with your mind, you're offended. When we don't care to hear what you have to say, you're insulted. Well, you didn't draw me with your mind. You drew me with the tight pants and the dangling hair, and you looking like the image of the female beast. Looking like other than yourself. That's what drew me. I came after your beauty and your lust. And that's all I'll ever see if you don't use your brain. That's right. Who did it? You do it. That's Revelation again. Living in the image of the beast. You hear me? I motivate them niggas out here in these streets. In these streets. Tell them how because I got them for the cheap. For the cheap. Street and popular because everybody know me.